Right, so let's talk about the future of React with universal web applications. Uh, first, let me introduce myself. My name is Bruno Gennaro. I'm front-end engineer at Cisco. I work basically in two projects there, that's Spark and Tropo. Uh, and also, I run the Orlando JS meetup. So if you want to go there to go to Disney, stop by to Orlando JS to say hi. Uh, I would like to thank to all the people that put this conference together. It's been amazing to be here. Uh, I'm pretty sure all the speakers had this warm welcome. Uh, and actually, if you walk like three blocks away from here, I noticed that there's a Bruno place, like a Little Italy Bruno's. So thanks for that. I feel more welcome than ever here. I really appreciate it. Yeah, so what does this talk about? Basically, we're going to cover a little bit of how JavaScript was born, then Node.js, the drum and fight between the terms universal and isomorphic JavaScript. And then we're going to jump into React.js. I'm going to try to explain to you why, how, when, and where you can use universal React. You're going to explain what is universal React in a few moments. So first, uh, how, many, how many people here use JavaScript like daily? Okay, that's a good number. And how many people here use React daily? Two, three, okay. Have you at least played around with React, you know what React is? Okay, so let's try. <laughs> so let's start from the beginning. I'm gonna tell a quick history for everything. So in 1995, we had a Net Netscape navigator, and they, they were trying to run a scheme that's a language in the Netscape navigator. So basically, they hired this guy, Brendan Ike, that he was responsible to implement scheme on the Netscape navigator. It turned out that they just changed their mind after hiring him and they want a job instead. So that's basically how JavaScript was born. And trust me, it was good enough at the time. And believe it or not, this is what Brendan wrote JavaScript in 10 days. Yeah, so a few years later, like 14 years, we had this guy, Ryan Dahl, that basically created the Node.js. And Node.js is basically he got a lot of the Google V8 JavaScript runtime from Chrome and put on the server side, so now you can write the JavaScript on the server side. But basically, initially, JavaScript was on a client side, which means on the browser. So now, with Ryan doing that, he, you are able to write JavaScript also on the server side. And it was funny how he, was the idea of him create that. So basically, he was uploading a file into a Flickr you know, the Flickr website for pictures. And he didn't know how much like, of the file was being uploaded to the server. He was just stuck there waiting for his picture to be uploaded to the server. So that's basically was how was Node, Node was born. He wanted to know like, how, how many percent of my file is being uploaded to the server. That was the, his main idea. So this got at his crazy idea. He got at the Google Chrome V8 run, runtime JavaScript and developers now are able to write JavaScript also on the server. Uh, in 2011, we have this guy called Jordan Walk. He is, he's the creator of the React.js. He worked at Facebook. And React.js is basically a JavaScript library. A lot of people say it's a JavaScript framework, but it's basically a library, a very powerful library, but uh, it is a library. When they compare to the MVC frameworks, like model view controller, JavaScript is only the view part. So that's why we consider it a library. And basically, uh, React.js is one data flow, which means you have properties. So you set immutable values to these properties and send it out to your components. React is basically a lot of components that you put together to create an application. But what is most powerful about React is that you have the virtual DOM. That's basically a copy of the DOM in memory, and React handles all the difference between when you, you do 
Like an, you want to update the DOM, and if you do this direct to the DOM like jQuery does, it's kind of expensive operation for the browser. So they have this virtual DOM and this GIF algorithm that you can basically compare both and only upload, upload not, sorry, only change what you need on the screen. We also have this JSX syntax that you are not, you don't need to use that React, but I, I believe all the community use because it's really easier to write and read code. And it's basically HTML or XML if you want to. On the, on the, inside the JavaScript. You can write HTML inside the JavaScript to render your component. Still in 2011, we have Charlie Robbins that came up with this isomorphic JavaScript term. So isomorphic, what is isomorphic, right? And basically, it's JavaScript that is the same code that you can run either on the client and the server. Uh, so JavaScript itself nowadays can do a lot of stuff, stuff, sorry, and then he came up with this term isomorphic. Initially it was that, and people was, okay, I'm doing JavaScript isomorphic, but uh, I'm not sure what that means, and, but whatever. Basically for now, just understand that it's, a, it's a the same code that you can run on the server and on the client, which means browser, okay? So we have Michael Jackson like not agreeing with the isomorphic term. You're gonna understand in a few seconds why Michael Jackson is doing that. And then in 2014, we have a developer called Michael Jackson. I make just make a joke. It's not a real Michael Jackson. It's just a guy that saying, "Hey, isomorphic doesn't make sense to use this term. Why we are using that? Let's call this universal JavaScript." And again, it just means that you can run JavaScript on client and server. This is the issue on, on the official uh, Facebook GitHub that they basically stop using the universal term and start adopting the isomorphic. I do believe that in the JavaScript community in general, they are still using the isomorphic, but when we are talking about React, they tend to be more to universal now. And when you say universal, it's kind of hard to say that it's only JavaScript on the server and on the client because now JavaScript can do a lot of other stuff. And I'm gonna mention this in a few moments. So that's basically how the fight begins. So we have the isomorphic, the universal, but uh, trust me, they are, in this case, they are pretty much the same. So don't worry, when you read articles about universal JavaScript, universal React, or isomorphic React, you're doing the same thing. And basically, most of the packages on GitHub for Universal React, they are still called isomorphic. But don't worry, they are the same thing. And, not, and here we are talking about only React on the server side and able to also run on the, on the client side. And the reason that they had like this fight is just because most of developers know it's really hard to name things in computer science. So I truly believe, at least with me, when I'm writing code, you change your variable names a lot of time, your function's name, because it's pretty hard, and you need to give like a clear idea for other developers if you wanna work on your code, that's what you are doing, like what is this variable about, what is this function about? So it's really hard. So that's why they try to change from isomorphic to universal, because Everybody was saying, okay, well, what is isomorphic? Well, let's call universal, that make more sense. So universal is like everywhere, you know, client and server. And that's basically how we end up using the universal term, okay? But uh, let's go back in time a little bit. And as I said, JavaScript was born in 1995. But uh, believe it or not, I started doing like web development probably in 2002 or three. And it's still the time, like almost 10 years later after JavaScript, JavaScript was still like something like really weird for developers. Being a JavaScript developer at the time, it wasn't a thing to be proud of at all. If you say, hey, I am a JavaScript developer, people were joking at you, you know, like laughing at you. In 2004, we had this article that was really, everybody in the community was reading, so 
saying that JavaScript was the worst invention ever. And that's kind of funny because we see JavaScript like now it's everywhere, right? So like I said, people tend to joke about it, say, hey, JavaScript is not a real programming language, you know. The real code is, doing, is only on the back end. You don't know how to program it. You just know like how to set a variable and do some loops, and JavaScript is not that. It's not a, a real program language. And as I said, now JavaScript is everywhere, even on the server. So you can write JavaScript on the server. And this talk is basically about the server and the client, client at the same time. Okay, so cool. We have React that's basically a JavaScript library. So let's try to focus on React now. How can you use React both on the server side and the client side? And I really believe everybody heard React was good, and believe it or not, it still is. Uh, yeah, so Universal React, again, just to enforce the idea, is basically a React code that's JavaScript that runs on the client and on the server. So what does that mean when I say like run the server? So what changed it for me? So basically, when you're doing a React application, as I said, it's a component based. You create a lot of components and glue them together. Uh, so if you have a React running on the server side, of course, you need to know the JS to do that. And on the first page load, basically, the server returns like a pre-render HTML string. So basically, when you, when you do a React component, React itself has a method to just give like, this component is this string. It's basically an HTML markup, and by the end of the day, is a string. So this is very important. You need to understand that when you say universal React, I'm not saying that the whole application is running on the server, and then do a little bit of stuff on the, on the client. It's just because the, the first time that the page loads, it runs on the server. From this point, it's just a client-side JavaScript. So if you have a request after the first load, it's still going to be on the, on the, on the client side. So you can go to our dev tools and inspect the network. You're going to see our request there. But if you do this on the, client, on the server side for the first time, it's going to run on the server side. You need to open your like, terminal and see what's going on there. It's basically, if you, if you have an experience with Node, it's basically what Node does. It's using Node, but uh, only for the first load, the first time the page opens. So why? If it's not a, like a real application running on the server, why should I care about only when the page loads to have this server side rendering, okay? So usually JavaScript frameworks like Angular, Ember, uh, Backbone, and they, they tend to render on the download. So if you have like a medium or large application, this can be really slow. And when you have a slow application, it hurts your user experience. If your app takes too much time to load, you're probably gonna end up losing your, your user or, or even, you know, the user can, can think that your application is broken. So we need to find a way to improve user experience. Okay, I have a lot of stuff to load, but I don't want my, my final client like waiting just to see everything that is going on. Another benefit of doing this server-side rendering is for SEO benefits. Nowadays, like uh, search engine, like Google, they already have, are smart enough to, to read those uh, single page applications. But back, back a few years ago, uh, ago this was impossible. So you had like to pay for a servers to do a crawl in your, in your web application and then render your, Google can index your, your page. Because basically it was just a JavaScript, like a template. You're gonna like render the, the real content from an API or a little bit later. So Google or other search engines couldn't read that. Now they can, but I, I, I want, enforce that it's still a better bet to have this server side rendered for the first time on the server side because when any search engine goes there, your content is there. So at least your content will be available at Google or other service they use for search. 
Um, yeah, so, like I said, every time that you release, like, a client side only, you don't have, like, server raining application to the web, someone writes a frustrated blog post because literally we are just breaking the web because if you have like a JavaScript to turn off in your browser or your API fails or something like that, you're not gonna see the page. So there's a lot of articles on the internet saying to, hey, not only write client-side applications, take advantage of the server-side rendering. As I said, we have m many benefits of that. And think with me, if you know JavaScript, you probably are a front-end developer, uh, and you now can write code on the server also, so you don't need a back-end developer now. You are the hawk star, so that's a good point for us. Okay, so let's try to understand again how this is possible in a React world. Word, sorry. Um, React basically, it's a component-based, component so it has the ability to get your component and just return a string to you. So try to memorize this string word. You have a HTML markup, and then it's basically a string. So we don't have any event listeners yet, so it's basically a string, okay? So if you're not familiar with the React syntax, it's nowadays based like this. We have other ways to write React, but basically you need to import React, now you need to import the React DOM separately because they have React Native. So if you want to wor work on the web, you need to, to import another package separately, like React DOM. And then you create your component. I'm using the ES6 or 2015 for this case. We're using class. Uh, but it's basically a function, OK? So here I'm just rendering a div that, hey, hello, little rock tech fest. And then I'm telling React that I want to render my component on my, my Boric tag, okay? That's basically uh, what Re React is. You have your components and then you attach to the DOM, okay? As I said, it basically returns a string. So that code that I wrote is going to show up like in my console like this. I have a bar, we have this div that React adds some properties just to keep track. Uh, and then you have your HTML, your final HTML code. Hello, little rock tech fest, okay? So now let's try to compare. This is, I'm talking about only client side applications. I'm not on the server side yet. So wait, I said to you before that you can run JavaScript on the server side, right? So remember Node, remember how Node was born? Yeah, so. That's right, we can run, if you have a string, I can get the string and send back to the server. So the server gonna pre-render this for me, okay? So uh, React DOM, as I said, the previous package basically have a method called render to a string that enable to pass a component to it and then return any child component because components can have like child components and in the, you have this big string for HTML markup, and just the client now has it, and just send it back to the to the client. So let's talk about how this work on the server side. So the code is a little bit similar. So we have React again, but instead of only React DOM, we have now the server, React DOM server, and then we have like our, um, a node application using Express just to create the routes down here. But basically, my component is the same thing. So that's the idea. Use your components in other place that's going to work, even on the client, on the server. We have the component here. Now I just change a little bit because I'm saying hello from the server, right? So instead, now what I'm doing, I'm creating a variable here and basically calling the render to string method from the React on server with my component. This is gonna give my string. So I'm saving this in my variable, and then I have this route on Express, and I'm just attaching my, my previous string to an app property, okay? And that's it. Here I'm running node, uh, and then what happened is that. On my HTML code, I need to have like um, a template engine just to get this app property before that I set. And that string, that whole string with all my components and subcomponents is gonna render there. 
So basically, I pre-rendered on the server side, and now I'm telling the client side, hey, I have this string. I give it to you, and then React needs to understand and handle what, I, what it needs to do after that, because it's basically a string. So what React does is, as I said before, he, he, React has the virtual DOM and has a really good diff algorithm that they can compare both. So basically, it goes to this string and assign all the event listeners. So if you have it to click on a button, if you have um, an event listener for other kind of stuff, React does that on the client side a few, not seconds, maybe even less than that, later on the app, okay? So yeah, this is basically magic, you know? You pre-render everything that you need, so now you can re give a faster web page load, and definitely this improved the user experience for your application. All right, but uh, as I said, we need to realize when is the best time to take advantage of this approach, okay? Because as I said, you can, you can render this before on the server, but uh, let's say if you are doing like a huge AJAX call for an API, so your, your website is still gonna wait for this to render to the client. But at least we can eliminate what you call F-O-U-C, the flash of unstyled content. When you open a page, you don't have the CSS yet. Your page looks like something like this, similar. So if you are pre-rendering on the server side, you can already show content to your client, even you are loading or another thing that you think is, is, is helpful for your users. So you are improving your user experience. The user can see something right away. And the, client, the, the server side tends to be faster than a request on the client side. So with single page applications, that's basically what Angular, Ember, Backbone, and React does. It's a single page application. Uh, it takes a second. Like most users expect the, 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 your application to be like less than two seconds, I would say, especially here in the United States. So, while your page is waiting for like this two seconds, it's basically a blank page with no style. It's only HTML markup. Um, so that's one of the benefits of the universe. So you can, you can be, have a better experience before your user see the real application. Another benefit of doing universal React, universal JavaScript, is like I mentioned before, so I'm not a back-end developer. I did some PHP back in the day, you know, but I'm, I don't consider myself a back-end developer. But now, since I'm doing JavaScript for quite a few time, I'm able to write a code, like consume an API that, and basically I can do this on the server and on the client, like it really doesn't matter. So now I may could change my job title to full stack which I think is kind of a big responsibility, but yes, so because you are doing a server-side code. So this, depending on, the, depending on the case, companies don't need like to hire a back-end developer just to run code on the server. It, of course, it, only, it depends on the, how, how large your application is, how complex it is, but basically you have now the ability to write your JavaScript code, your React code on the server-side, which make, uh, maintenance is much easier for us because if I have a bug on the server side and I'm using pretty much the same JavaScript file, I can just end the bug there. Instead of using my, my dev tools, I can use my terminal to see what's going on on the node side, on the server side, right? Uh, another benefit of using universal React, universal JavaScript, is what we call progressive enhancement. This is a, a term that's been quite a few times like talking before, because basically, server rendering allow you to send the HTML to, to the client, right? So you can enhance this experience and render more components in the client later. So you need to think, okay, what I need to show to the client right away or faster so I can get his attention to stay in my web application, right? So we have to go even above that because you are sharing components. When you render React components on the server side, it ships the HTML down to the client, and then the React on the client takes care of all the diff, all the event listeners, and we're ready to go. Yeah. 
And as I mentioned before, even though Google can already like, execute JavaScript in crawlers, it's pretty much safer, I would say, you can bet on the non-JS fallback situations. If you have a server-side rendering, what happens is that when Google reaches this page, you already have the content because it was pre-rendered on the server side. So I do believe that's safer. You, you can provide this, this content before. You know? So as I said, after the first load, the page is only client side. But if you, if you think with me, let's say you can start going to our web application, not only the home page. You can start on something like slash my applications, right? So if you, if you get to the URL slash my applications directly, it's still gonna be on the server side, the first load. So all the page that if you go directly, that's gonna render first on the, on the server side. So that's why Google can in, see this like, as, as a better approach because you are already seeing the content. So it doesn't, Google goes like literally page by page from your website that it tells it he wants to index and then read the content. So if you have a server side application, you are safe that you, your con content will be available for everybody. Cool, right? There are a few points that are, I would like to reinforce because nowadays we have also other frameworks that really take care of the whole application at isomorph because universal application. It's not the case for React. When we say React or isomorphic React, universal isomorphic React application, think that it's only for the first load. So universal apps, especially React, do not replace the server. You, you still need to have an API to consume. If you want to do some logic on the server side, you still have to do it because it's, it's just a way that you can pre-initialize the client. We want to give a better experience, a faster experience to the user when he hits your web application. It doesn't matter where we, he are on the application. So after page loads, it's become a client-side JavaScript. Always, even for me, when I start doing Universal React, this was kind of confusing, so I'm saying, hey, when am I using server-side, when am I using client-side? So basically for Universal React, only the first time the page load. It doesn't matter which page it is on your application, but it's only on the first time. So you need to be careful about what you want to display there. You want to consume an API before, that if it's not an expensive operation, like a, a, a big API call, that's a good idea maybe, so you can cache this and, and turn out so our application will be faster. And yeah, so just a quick recap, guys. Keep in mind, first page load, server return a pre-rendered HTML strings, and the server send it back to the client, so your HTML is already there, the, the client can see it faster. From that point on, it's only client side. So if you navigate through your application, you're gonna see if you are doing like an uh, Ajax call, you can, you can still debug using the dev tools, the network tab, you can see the request there. If you read, the, you read this page directly, you're gonna see that it's doing this same request on the server side. So as I said, this eliminates the FOC, give a better use, F-O-U-C, sorry, give a better user experience, like a faster one. Again, you can have the same developer or similar front-end developers to maintain this code, which makes it easier. Sometimes even cheaper or expensive, depending on developers. <laughs> uh, we, we have, we take advantage of the progressive enhancement, and also we can be sure that search engine optimization will be uh, like, uh, indexable for our, our, our pages because we have the server side rendered before. And that's basically it. So, thank you. That's my Twitter, BF Gennaro, so feel free to hit me out there. If you have any question, any suggestion, or just wanna check, let me know.